I'll introduce Caroline, but uh, Pacific Art League, we are celebrating our 100th year as a nonprofit and art school. We are located in Palo Alto and we are an art school and an art gallery. Um, before COVID, we were in the building on Ramona Street in downtown Palo Alto, but now we're online. Um, all of our classes are online um, and it's easy to join. Um, our website is pacificartleague.org. You can look at all of our classes. Our teachers are all um, professional art teachers who have experience with Zoom. And you know we teach everyone um, of all ages and all levels. Don't worry if you've never taken an art class. I never took an art class. I'm not an artist. And I learn every day from the students and the instructors, um, especially who I'm here to introduce, Caroline Mustard. Um, Caroline Mustard um, is an incredible instructor. I would say Caroline specializes in people who say, I can't do art. I've never drawn, um, or I've drawn as, I, I used to draw as a child and then I stopped because you know I, I had to study or my parents told me I had to be an engineer um, and now I'm retired and now I wanna get back to art. Um, and also, you know, art, it's a stress reliever. It's better than being stuck in front of the TV or on your iPad reading bad news. Um, there is no bad news when you're engaged with art. Um, and uh, Caroline, and I'm, I'm excited to introduce Caroline and Caroline's going to talk about um, how to draw, um, how to be a beginner and draw and not be um, frustrated. Everyone is an artist here and it's easy. And Caroline's going to talk about, um, about those steps. And I should also mention Caroline just published her first book, The Draw Joy of Drawing, which just launched, um, it just came out this month, right before Christmas. So not only is she uh, an instructor, but she's a published author and we're very, very proud of her. So Caroline, welcome. Hi, welcome, Ali. Um, I think it's probably a good idea. Hi, thank you. Hi, my name's Caroline Mustard. Uh, you can still hear a little bit of an English accent, not much. I've been in North America uh, for longer than I care to disclose, uh, but I was trained um, as a painter in England um, and um, I've been drawing since I can remember. And um, I very uh, love Pacific Art League. I'm on the board at the Pacific Art League. We're very proud of our 100 year anniversary. And um, a few years back, um, we really took a look at our classes and we realized we really didn't have any classes for beginners. So if someone wanted to draw or they wanted to paint, they would go into a class of people who were already doing that. And while the instructor might take great pains to try to help, they kind of felt a little bit, um, my God, I'll never be able to do that. And it's sort of like, so they never, so that they would leave. So I said, well, why don't we start beginning classes? And um, I love teaching. I have an equal passion for teaching as I do for my own art and for seeing the, for just uh, giving the joy um, that comes along with it. Not always, sometimes some frustration, but you kind of get through it. So over the uh, last two years, we've really worked out a series of classes for total beginners. And as soon as we said total beginners, didn't it? The floodgates opened, Ali. People just signed up, said, yes, this is what I want. So this caused us to have to take a look at, well, what do we need to do when we have somebody who probably hasn't drawn for years or lacks some, um, you, know, uh, you, you know, confidence or whatever? What do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is to tell you all to leave your self-critic, shove them, him, it out the front door, not invited to this little workshop because they don't do any good whatsoever. So that's number one. Number two, we had to ask ourselves, what is it that we know, uh, which is just second nature to us as artists that you, know, you, never, you never teach anybody. And so we started right at the very, very beginning. And um, so it all starts with a pencil. So if you pick up the pencil you've got, you're gonna see a little bit about how we start in the book. This book is actually the drawing classes that I do in sequence. So um, it's sort of ideal because if you have the book, um, 
you can just um, go, this is one of my earliest drawings here, um, an early drawing right here at, at the beginning. And then what we do first of all is we go, well, if you're gonna be drawing, it's between you, the paper and a pencil, that's it. That's all you've got. So you better know something about your pencil. So the first thing we introduce you to right here is the different types of pencils and why they're different and what they do. And each time you have a little bit of um, a chance to kind of um, an exercise so you can actually see it for yourself. So I want all of you to pick your pencils up and this might seem really obvious to you, but believe me, it's very important as we go down the line and have a look and see what it says on your pencil. Quite likely it'll say a number or it'll say HB, 2H, 3B, whatever. So, um, you know, we can just have a look at that and say, well, what does that all mean? The pencil and the graphite in the pencil is varying shapes of being very hard graphite, which is used by engineers. We don't really use it much in drawing, very pale, hard, very hard to erase. And then, and you can't, you know, um, um, rub it with your finger. And then it goes up through to HB, which means hard and black, which is the regular, mostly what you use for, for writing. And you've probably got a number two. Um, and then it goes more and more black, which is 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, all the way up to 8B, which is almost like charcoal. It's so soft, you can take your finger and rub it. So this means that you can get different characteristics with different types of pencils. So um, in our class, we tell you which pencils to get. Usually you can get an array of these in any kind of a little set that you can get from Michaels and they, they come like, but then at least you know, you know what your tools are and what to do with them. The next thing we teach you is, oh my goodness, if you pick up your pencil, which I want you to do right now, you'll probably find that you use it to write so you hold it fairly much at the end. You see that? And most people hold their pencil in what's called a tripod grip like this. Now that is very limiting as to the types of drawing that you can do. You actually limit it. So um, we give you the five different ways that you can hold a pencil, like a drumstick, um, like a paintbrush, like uh, holding it like this and why you have them in these different ways. And did you know that the way you hold your pencil is, the, is really the open sesame to being able to draw? So usually we draw by holding the pencil further down. Nobody ever told you that. And then you're trying madly and all you can do is stick figures. Well, no wonder, because you're so close up to the, to the page. You can't even see what you're drawing. As soon as you go down here like this and hold it a little bit further down, then you can start to draw with your wrist instead of drawing with your fingers. Do you see the difference? Here, I just have to move my fingers. Here, I can move my wrist. I can move my um, elbow. I can even move. So now I can do nice, big, wonderful, flowing, lines. I can do straight lines very easily. I can do circles easily. Just do it in the air. Don't feel like an idiot. You know, so see, and then you can, different ways that you hold your pencil. So the very first chapter is all about that. And it's all about the different types of lines that you make. When you go, well, why is that important? Well, it sort of is. Um, you've got straight lines. There's even an exercise that tells you how to do a straight line so that you don't have to have a ruler all the time, but you can get decent straight lines. There's an exercise on how to draw circles. Um, and then of course, there's an exercise on doing curly, what we call S curves, like nice, wonderful. So all of these things are in there. And the first chapter, the first exercise ends up with just 
doing a thing called doodling and doodling with different, um, um, and, and this is very, very fun. And um, doodling, you know, with all kinds of different patterns. So all of us can enjoy drawing. You don't have to have an, uh, we take it on such a little gradient that it doesn't matter. We're not expecting you to, um, you know, draw your face or draw something perfectly right off the bat. We know that's going to be just, we didn't learn that way. When I learned, I spent hours copying, carefully copying all of the, um, the Winnie the Pooh pictures in my favorite book, or, you know, I, I would take hours of that. And so many of us that started drawing when we were children used to copy. So in these, um, in these chapters and on the classes, the classes that we deliver either, you know, to different outlet um, um, groups such as yourself or through the um, Pacific Art League, um, this is the steps that we take you through so that you've got an idea. And we'll, we'll have, I'm gonna demonstrate and we'll do the, some of this together. Um, now, every chapter of the book also contains wonderful um, quotes and very beautiful quotes by some of my favorite artists. This one here is by um, Camille Pizarro, one of the original impressionists. He said, it is only by drawing often, drawing everything, drawing incessantly, that one fine day you discover to your surprise that you have rendered something in its true character. So I love that. And another one here is from one of my heroes, an artist called David Hockney, who also works with the iPad. And he made the observation that drawing had disappeared from art schools um, about 60. He says, I was aware that the teaching of drawing was being stopped almost 30 years ago. And I always said the teaching of drawing is the teaching of looking. A lot of people don't look very hard. I think that's a really important thing for us to think about because for me, drawing is about looking. And the thing I tell you is very often when you start to draw, uh, you don't look. You look into your head and you go, well, what's an eye like? And you draw an eye which is in your head, or you draw a stick figure, or you do whatever, and it's just imaginary. But when you start to look, that is very, it really feels great. And you go, oh my goodness, all my students say, I, I, I realize now I never saw what was around me. So that's one of the fun side benefits that comes with this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little exercise from the second chapter which is textures and patterns. And um, we'll start with a couple of exercises, just holding our pencil in a different way. And then we're gonna learn this five different textures, not gonna attempt all of them. We're gonna do the first one really easy. And then we're gonna do a little drawing using that, if that's okay with you. Um, so let's just have, um, uh, Devorah, if we take a little break, so anybody who's got any questions after at each step can ask me questions and I'd be happy to answer. Okay. If people have questions, you want to just go ahead and unmute yourselves. Everybody good to go? I realize we haven't actually seen everybody or introduced me to everyone, but I'm taking it um, that you're all following me. And if you've got a question, then please uh, let us know, right? You know, in the little breaks, and um, I'll gladly take up your questions, okay? All right, looks like we're good to go. So shall, I'm going to now move to my drawing pad, and, and then you take out your drawing pad, and each each part of the book and of the class, because the book is the class, um, allows you to just go very gentle steps. And at the end of it, you'll be amazed at how people are, I know Ali will second me in this because she's come into my classes and seen people pop their eyes out and said, I can never imagine I'd be able to do this after so short a period. 
but it's a matter of scaffolding the class in such a way that you can just keep building your skill until you're on your own. And the final chapter is called drawing without a net. So you can do it without any help. But to begin with, you're gonna do drawings where you're gonna be copying things. You're gonna use um, some time um, tested methods of um, being able to draw things so that they look like things. And, um, and it's really fun. So let's just, now I'm gonna turn to my, um, right here. So now you're gonna go from me, you're gonna see my drawing board here and you should be able to see it. And there's my hand. Uh, let me just arrange this a little bit. Everybody can see that, right, Deborah? I think okay, I was so, muted, but yes, we can see. Okay, great. All right. So what we're gonna do right off the bat is I'm just gonna show you different ways of holding your pencil. Now I'm not expecting you to remember all this, okay? But as, since I talked about it, I'm gonna demonstrate it. The first thing is traditional. And there you're holding, it's called tripod. And you're holding it like this and you can do little kind of, you know, um, very detailed work here, but it's kind of hard to see things because you can't see your hand. You can't see what you're doing because it's covered by your hand. So now we have the next one, which is called drumstick. So here you're holding your pencil. If you hold your hand like this, you're holding it so that it's, I say, you know, it's like this, do you see? You're holding it like this. Now, what does this allow you to do? Well, it allows you to take the edge of your pencil and put it straight right up against it. And so now I'm managing to put my pencil, I'm managing to do these nice kind of um, shady lines and I can go harder because it's going on the edge of my pencil, right on the edge, rather than the tip. It's going on the edge. So there I'm using the drumstick. Then I'm using the paintbrush method, which is now holding my hand down the end of the pencil, the same as I would a paintbrush. Now look at how lovely I can do all these lovely lines. And I want you to try this as I do it. It's so much easier to do big flowy lines, to do nice straight lines. I can see it, see? The next one is top heavy. Well, now that's very similar to what we did with the drumstick, but I'm now holding my hand right on top of this. And don't worry, I'm not expecting you to grasp all this, but I just wanna demonstrate it. Now I can really go in heavily here and I can start using one of the tools that you'll be using. Um, in the same way, and this tool is called a tortillon or a blending stick. And it's just really, it's a piece of um, uh, rolled paper and you buy them very cheaply. But look, I'm using a soft pencil so I can go over and it's graphite and I can just blend it in. And look how lovely that, I mean, it just instantly I'm managing to get something so it looks like you could go right inside this shape, doesn't it? Just by using my pencil like that. So you have all of these different things that you can do with your pencil. Now I've got a fairly soft pencil, um, but um, you know, you might have a little bit of a hard one, but the softer the pencil, the harder you like them, see I'm holding it here so that I can get this graphite really put up. And the, you know, you need to learn and get a little bit skilled at doing this to start with, because otherwise, you know, you're just fighting with your pencil and then you'll go, oh gosh, I'm, I'm terrible. I'll never do, I'll never draw. But it, the, uh, half of it is just learning the skill. It's like learning, um, it's like learning to cook. Nobody ever taught you 
how would you ever know? It's not like some innate ability. It's something you learn. And we build up your skills step by step by step. And don't expect a lot out of yourself to start with. Like don't set your expectations that you're going to be able to draw like Michelangelo. In fact, I have a great quote by Michelangelo in the book where he says, it, you know, it really takes some work and we have some time on our hands, so why not learn to do it? Now, another thing that we teach you in these different ways of holding your pencil is that it's really hard if you hold your pencil like this, not to press hard. You press hard like this. When you hold it further down, you can do very light, light. See how easy it is to just kiss the paper with your pencil. Why is that important? Well, it's very important. The reason it's important is that you want to erase things. And it's practically impossible to erase a line as strong as this, but it's very easy to erase light lines because we'll be teaching you to trace, we'll be teaching you to make um, little guidelines so that you know where to put things, you know? Um, just make a guideline, like a real simple little guideline. And um, um, you know, you'll want to erase it. it. It's there to help you. So you kind of know where to put things. And if, it's, if you do your, your guidelines like this, well, it'll be there forever and you're never, ever, ever going to be able to um, erase it. It's just gonna be, so you, that it behooves you to learn to do things very, very softly and lightly. And I always liken it to um, cooking. Like when you're putting some, and you're at the stove and you're adding in, you know, some oregano or uh, marjoram, you do it little by little. You don't just plonk it all in and take it out again. You wanna go little by little. And that way you can sort of gradually build up, build things up until you know that you're doing the right thing. So you build, 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 and gradually. So we're gonna do a little exercise right now. Um, and we're going to end up actually drawing a leaf, okay? Which is, I think something we can all have some fun with. So, oh, I didn't show you, I'm very sorry, the very last way to hold your, your, um, your pencil. And by the way, when, when you do these pencil exercises, we give you an exercise in each case. Um, this is called inverted, where you're holding it like this, and it's almost backwards. I've never, I don't particularly use that, but some people do. And you can sort of, and it's a good scribbly method. My more no, normal way to hold my pencil is at the end, like this or like this. Just these two are the ones I personally use for my drawing. Okay, good. So I'm going to go to the next exercise and we're gonna be able to draw along with me. So Devorah, why don't we open up? Anybody got a question or? Has everyone managed to look at their pencil and see what kind of a pencil you have? Again, if you guys wanna unmute yourselves, if you have questions. Uh, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna um, take myself off um, spotlight. I'm gonna remove my spotlight and just chat a little bit to everybody. Okay. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Okay. What are you doing? <clears throat> Sorry. What are you doing with your elbow all this time? I mean, I'm at a desk. I see your whole arm moving, but I have my elbow down. I don't know that I can do anything if my elbow is free flowing like that. So what do you recommend very about elbows or, or very, balance? Very, very good question. Um, let me just come... Um, Here's what, like I'm having to do my demonstration here because I have to pho photograph it, you know, so it, it doesn't, if, if I did it on my desk, which is how I normally do it, you would, you'd be seeing me drawing upside down. So I have to do that. But what I do, and I'm just gonna take, um, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna move from my, it's a very, very good question. Okay. So if I was drawing, I put my hand like this and I draw on top of my hand 
or if I, I if I'm going to do a big drawing, to be honest with you, I'll like I just move my arm like this. I do always support my arm because otherwise you can get your shoulder gets to hurt a lot. If you you know when you get to that point, but normally if I'm drawing from my tape, I can move this like this fairly easily, and I just move my hand like this. Do you see I'm just staying? Does that answer your question? Did that answer the question? I have to unmute. Uh, yes, but I'm seeing that you never really have your arm resting on your desk. It's still always in the air or in your other hand? Um, actually not, because um, normally when I'm drawing, um, I'm drawing downwards like this. So I might have, uh, my hand will be actually on the desk. Um, if you've got your hand on the desk, then, and, and, but you want to get a, like a, a bigger thing, I put my hand under my arm and that lets me do this, see? Okay. You see that? Then yeah. you can sort of look down on it and you can hold your pencil like this. And that's how I would do it. Okay. Thank and then you. when we do the classes, um, as we go along on the class, if you're having a problem making a mark, I go in individually and talk to you and we just sort that out because there's different strokes for different folks. You know, I mean, it's like people have difficulty with different things. And it's kind of like I'm asking you to sort of think anew about something as simple as holding a pencil and saying, you know what? That has everything to do with whether you can draw or not. And you go, well, now it's kind of a bit difficult to teach some old dog new tricks, you know, like I've been doing this all my life. So I had to go back and go, what is it I do that maybe folks who weren't trained as artists and haven't been paint, drawing every day of their lives, what is it nobody taught them? And we found that holding pencils and making marks was just one of the most basic things. It's kind of like sets you up to do your cooking. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you don't know these things, a lot of these things are just second nature to those of us, uh, my, my collaborator, Katie and myself, we really had to go back to the beginning in teaching folks who really, um, wanted to learn the skill of drawing. We're teaching you the skill, it's a skill, just like cooking's a skill, just like anything is a skill. So, um, you know, we're not really interfering, like when we're not saying you're better than you, it's just learning skills. So this is, the, this is why we concentrate on these very simple basics to start with, okay? I Any have... other questions before yeah. we go to our, yeah, go ahead. I would like to know if you have your drawing pad flat on the table or if you put it at a slight angle. Um, I, I would tend to hold it at a little bit of an angle depending on its size. I have a lot of sketchbooks, which are little tiny ones. Mm -hmm. And I like to think it's good to start so that you're, and, and that I would put straight. But if I put something straight on the table, I kind of can't see it. So I probably just, um, I probably hold it up against the table and then my hand at that point is pretty free. So mm -hmm. if I hold it like this, then I'm pretty free to draw. Um, but a lot of times I do just go straight on the table, to be honest with you. And the reason I do that is because I can get a lot of purchase on my strokes, um, especially if I'm doing something like charcoal or something where I want a lot of purchase, meaning a lot of um, pressure on my strokes then having it flat on the table is really a good idea. Different things for different paintings. Couldn't, I couldn't 100% answer you how I do everything. Um, but I do know if you just wait one second, I wanna grab something and show you. Um, I do know that for example, this is a, a, a drawing book that I use. And here is a drawing out of my window. Oh, this is a drawing of Grace Church, which is just 
down the road from me. So in this case, I stood out under the Grace Cathedral, I'm sorry, you're probably familiar with it. In this case, I sat um, on, you know, on a bench and I held it like this, my, my, my book here. And then my hand's pretty free. So I really like books that are like easy to open and recommend, you know, getting some kind of, a lot of, I, I really like sketchbooks that open like this, like a book. Right. And um, I can hold them and put them on my knee and, you, and they're hard enough that I can just hold it like this and sketch. Okay, thank so you. That's a point I get, you know, uh, so this is a similar, this is um, a drawing I did with some friend, folks down at the Palace of Arts. So you can see that, and this is fairly, this is like um, eight by 10. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's that one. This is, um, so these are different drawings that I've done, you know, with this book. And sometimes, and I, I really, one of the things I really recommend and I um, um, encourage everybody to do in my drawing classes is to get a simple sketchbook and start sketching. And that it, they're, they, for me, my sketchbooks are like, um, they're my history. And you can find all kinds of things in there. You might find, you know, a list of things I need to do that day or a shopping list. Uh, you might find uh, my grandchildren have picked it up and drawn something in it. You could be, find anything, but it's a little kind of memory bank right. you're drawing. And constantly drawing builds up your visual muscle and your visual vocabulary. So when we actually get into learning, I really encourage people to have a sketchbook and not to be embarrassed about it. But it also lets you see how much better you get as you go on. So um, any more questions at this point? Okay, we should go on to our exercise, Devora. Ali, are we ready? Awesome. So I'm going to go back to um, my sketch, my, my sketch pad here. And I'm gonna open a new um, page. Oh, this reminds me, this is funny. One of the things I always say to my students, if they get, if they get bored, um, I say, try drawing your hand. That's very hard, by the way. Hand drawing is just great to just constantly be drawing your hands because you'll it'll you'll be terrible to start with, you know. Like look at the number of times I've drawn my hand. Okay, so enough said. It's a great little exercise. No, you know, you can draw anything. Draw a cup. Draw. I I tell people don't try and draw an entire room to start with. Just try and draw a pencil or something simple. Give yourself a break. You know, you're not going to make, um, you know, a baked Alaska, the first thing you're going to, you know, um, make when you, when you learn to cook or a, a souffle, you're going to start with something simple like scrambled eggs. Okay. So let's do some scrambled eggs right now. So we're going to now start with um, one of the first drawing exercises in the book. Um, and the chapter two is textures and patterns. And it gives you the five basic textures that you learn in art school. Um, and they, this is a texture. And it, you, we go through it, we, we have a little exercise to do the texture. We also always include um, drawings by famous artists. This is one of my favorites. This is um, Monet. And, um, and I have quotes from all the artists. This is the one from Claude Monet. One day Boudin said to me, learn to draw well and appreciate the sea, the light, the blue sky. I took his advice, Claude Monet. Okay, so let's, and his, a lot of his drawings are done using the very primary method of, um, and these call hatching. So hatching, we're not um, going to be chickens. Hatching is an artistic technique used to create tonal or shading effects. 
by drawing closely spaced parallel lines, drawing the lines at differently spaced intervals and or altering the pressure on your pencil to create light or dark strokes. You can create a graduated shading effect, okay? So what I want you to do is draw a box, okay? Uh, Caroline, it's a little blurry. I don't know if you're too close to, I don't know, your camera's adjusting. There you go. Is that better? Yeah, there you go, your camera adjusted, thank you. Mm -hmm. So everybody draw a little box. Doesn't have to be a perfect box, just a box. And once you're done with the box, if you will watch me, I'm going to show you how to do a hatching exercise. And this is the most basic form of sketching and drawing that you could possibly imagine. So when I've got my box, first of all, I'm going to start to draw very light, very light. You see, I'm holding my pencil at the end. I'm just gonna very lightly draw parallel lines. Now these lines could be small or they could be long, but they're very, very light to start with. We'll just cover the whole thing. Don't matter if it goes a little bit outside the box because you can erase it. But you just, now do you notice that I'm right, I'm a righty, right-handed. So the best way to do this is that it goes lower and left to upper right, like it's a diagonal line, because that's what's comfortable because that is the natural sweep of my hand. So I just go take it in the natural sweep of my hand and I just cover it with some just light lines. Now I can start at this end and go back over and in the same direction. And, but I'll stop short. I'll stop a little bit short. And then I'm gonna just keep adding and adding and adding, but keep stopping short of that top corner. And now I can start to put a little bit more pressure on my pencil. So now I'm getting a nice graduated line, which is just gradually going from light to dark. So this becomes a way to make shaded things shaded because it's by light that we tend to see things. And now I'm going to go, you could just do the same thing, darker and darker until you get really dark here. Now you kind of, what you're doing is you're loading up the graphite. You're putting more and more graphite. So you've got a very little one end and you've got a lot the other end. Now in our, so now if you take your finger and you've got a softish pencil, you can kind of rub it together if you like. You can also take an eraser and one of the types of erasers that we ask you to get, let me see if I've got one, is um, it's like pliable. Here we go. It's um, like this, very, very soft and you can like literally blot things off with it here. And we tell you all this, we give you an exact list of materials to use. And you know you can you can work hard on this, and, and and get your your get it pretty perfect by the end, you know. Um, and in in art school, they teach you to do this, and the teacher comes around, and you know they very critical. But I'm not. I'm not like that. But do you see how we're getting a gradual effect of light? which is kind of interesting. You go, oh, that wasn't so difficult. So let's just take a little break here, Deborah or Ali.
and see how everybody's doing. So if you take a little break and see if everybody kind of understood what I asked you to do. And you go, gosh, this is like, well, this is like this you do in your first year at college, at our college, you learn to do this. So I'm going to, um, if I remove my spotlight right now and have a look at everybody and how are you all doing so far? You managed to do your little boxes? Hold them up so I can see. Yay, awesome, yay. That's lovely. Oh yeah. Terrific. See, you can do it. This is what's important is the feeling that you can do it. You take it very, 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 very slowly. All right. I think everybody's ready for the first exercise, the leaf. Okay. So these different, um, I'm going to just show you, there are five different things that you do. Um, so I'm going to go back. The next one you learn, you don't have to do this, but this is cross hatching, which is basically both sides. You do it both ways, just making little crosses. So it's going one way and it's going the other way. This is called cross hatching. And every time we show you um, an illustration by a well-known artist, the cross hatching demonstration in, in our book is by Rembrandt. He's pretty good at it. Um, the next one is called pointillism or stippling. And this was perfected. Um, this is where you just make a bunch of little dots and it's actually better, like you can use a pen with it, but it's a uh, pen or a piece of charcoal is ideal, but you're just making little dots and everything is done in dots. And there are some amazing artists this is for those of you who love, just spend a lot of time doing something, you're very perfectionist. For me, impossible. I lose patience within the first second. But the, um, we give you an example by an artist called George Sura. Um, and this is all done with little tiny dots. Um, and then the fifth one is line drawing or contouring where you're just using lines and the closer they are together, the heart, you know, it, you can, it's just like a contour map, but also it's just drawing things with lines, which a line drawing, um, we give uh, examples. Um, and I love doing just straight line drawing. And then finally, there's my personal favorite, how I draw personally, and it's called scribbling. And now I can just go anywhere I want and I can just scribble my heart out in different types of ways. I could do it neatly like this. And then and now I can sort of look at different trees. So some trees are scribbled like this and they look really pretty like chestnuts and stuff like this, you see. And I can scribble my tree. Another tree might be more of this type of a a scribble. So there's tons, different sorts of scribbles that you can do. I'm a big scribbler. So that's, but all we're going to do today is request that you just learn to do the basic, which is hatching. Okay, so since you've all done a pretty good job, it looks like, um, I'm going to now go to the next page. May I ask a question? Absolutely, you can. Okay, when you're doing the, the, lines are yeah. you going just one way or are you going back and forth um that's a damn good question excuse my language i'm going just one way okay thanks um, here's what i'm doing I, I try to do it like from the upper left or like i find that my hand naturally goes in a certain way um, and if you if you have your your page in front of you, you'll find that if you're right handed, you're going from lower left to upper right. Okay. If you're left handed, you're going from lower right to upper left. That's the natural sweep of your arm. If you draw start drawing with the natural sweep of your arm um, without having to kind of get into contortions, um, it's it's much better. 
um, it's much more comfortable. So I will usually go in the direction of my arm. Um, and I just do one. And I could do it both ways, actually. Truth be told, I could do it both ways. Um, I could do it both ways. So what is it you're calling the natural move of your arm? If you're right-handed, is it from the bottom top or top bottom? Or I really don't know what the natural movement of my arm is. Well, if, you, if, you, if you sit back from the table, are you, are you a righty? I'm a righty. Okay, so just extend your arm. Let me just demonstrate this to you. I'm just gonna highlight myself so that you can see me. Okay, so I'll just put my spotlight on. Oh, not, not there, sorry. I've just got to do this here. Here we go. Hi. Hi. So, just extend your arm. You'll see it goes from bottom left to upper right. Okay. Just try that. See that I, I speak sooth. Just don't believe me. Just see that I'm, it goes like this. And that's the natural sweep. Do you see that? If I do this, I have to, I'm just saying natural sweep of your hand goes, does everybody agree with me? And, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be insistent, but I think you'll find that that's true, that your arm from your elbow naturally goes from bottom left to upper right. It goes on a diagonal, not straight. If you're trying to draw like this, you have to kind of constrict yourself. So if you just sort of extend your hand, it just goes on a diagonal. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> you're using your whole bottom part of your arm. You're using your I whole am. forearm. I am. That's okay. why I hold my pencil further up like this. And even if I'm sit, I'm doing straight on the page, I'll still do that. And I don't do, I don't hold my pencil like this unless I'm doing something very, very delicate and detailed. I hold it here so I can see what I'm doing. Because if I hold it like this, I can't see anything. And then, but it's still, if I hold it like this, yeah, I think that's the way I do it. I don't um, have to. I just, I'm just sort of forwarding to you what works for me. So I have a question. Um, so I forget what you call the lines that aren't the straight lines, the curvy, curvy. Um, S curves. S, S, S curves. S yeah. It seems like that would be good for drawing an ocean. Absolutely. In fact, that's a great exercise. And I'll tell you how to draw in, and I'll actually just show you a trick for drawing an ocean with a, I usually, I use a, a figure eight. And um, I'll just show you that right now, kind of fun. And you can get water that looks just like water. Hey, you, you, you're like letting me uh, uh, give away all the, the tricks of the trade. <laughs> um, but there are tricks, you know, there are. And if artists aren't willing to, to, to share them, then it's not fair. Okay, so look at this. See, just figure eight, light, light, light. And here's the trick. You make it smaller as it goes back into the distance. See, I'm not removing my hand at all. And it gets smaller and smaller as it goes back and it'll give you some distance. But absolutely, this is definitely a great technique for making something look like water. See? Whereas if you're doing clouds, you know, you might wanna do more like little circles. And this is why it, like different, different lines have, di uh, they're called mark making. And they have different characteristics and you learn this as you go along, you know, so that, you know, if you're going to do a cloud, you're going to use a different type of mark to the kind of mark that you might want to use if you were doing an, um, water, um, you know, and then if, if I want to just, again, here now I'm using my hatching, I'm just kind of going to give it a little bit of sky here and a, 
So you can see that as you do things, um, every single mark gives a different method or different uh, communication, a different character to the work that you do. Let's go, so if you're all ready, uh, any more questions before I go to the, our, um, we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna do a leaf. Um, we'll do a leaf and then um, depending on how much time we've got. Yeah, we're at 11.25, are we good, Ali? Yes. So we're just gonna do a very simple exercise today. Um, we're gonna do a leaf. So we're gonna draw a nice line which is a little bit and kind of that's going to be the center of the leaf. And then you could do another one. And this is, this is again. The... Now, one thing I want to say to you is that when I draw you, um, somebody asked a very interesting question about, um, do I put my hand on the paper? The answer is yes. I usually have my finger on the paper. So even though I might have my, my, my um, pencil held here, my finger is touching and I move my finger rather than move the pencil. So I'm actually moving my finger on, uh, it, it's sort of interesting. Never really, read, but that's, I move my finger. And you know, it's different for different people. Um, but I just want to let you know that how you hold your brush and how you hold your hand, you, you, you to begin with, it's going to be a little, you, you know, you don't want to put, it's just pretty crazy how much it affects what you do. Okay, so now while we've got a central line, let's sort of do uh, a nice curvy and a heart shaped leaf perhaps, so you could do any kind of leaf you want. And in fact, what happens at the end of the chapter where you learn this is we send you on a little ex expedition um, and we, um, we have you go out and find very simple things to draw. Um, and we like, you know, leaves, we actually include some pictures like a leaf, a piece of grass, something simple, a piece of bark, just textures. That's all we're talking about, just different textures. And so now we're gonna, we're gonna draw the leaf. So we're gonna just do simple lines like this, just across. And let's kind of, And maybe these ones are going to go this way. Now I'm pretty experienced, but you can just turn your paper over and you can always move your sketchbook around. It's never, you don't have to always have it in the same position. And let's just kind of use this little shading technique to shade ourselves a little. And then all of a sudden, oh, it's starting to look a little bit like a leaf. And let's say that this one is a little bit more You can see that as I add some shading, starts to kind of get a little bit of um, oomph to it. You know what I'm saying? Looks a little bit 3D, doesn't it? And we took, we learn all of this stuff as we go along. I wanted to keep it very, very simple today. Um, and I might come along with my eraser and erase the edges once I'm done and maybe get make the edges with my 
what on my hat I've got my this on the edge here now. I might make the edges just a little bit, you know, most leaves have edges that aren't, you know, they're not exactly, they're a little bit, I think my leaf is gonna have these little edges to it. So, so I put that shape in just to kind of, as a guiding shape, but I don't have to stick with it. I can erase it and then make my leaf. Oh, yeah. So you can see that the more you have a grasp of how to make these things work, the better it is. You can always have your eraser. You can always change things. And um, you can use your finger and mark it around. And we have you do this from life, actually. And uh, that's, a, you know, so that you just start to be able to, you know, do something like some, like some things that like a leaf or maybe you're doing a flower or something simple. Don't try and, you know, um, build the world in a day. See, so I'm just still using this same method of building it up. And like I say, it's a softly, softly catchy monkey. You do it bit by bit by bit, and you'll get a pretty decent drawing. Now I thought what I might do as my final part of my demo, I hope, you know, like when, um, after today, after class, just find um, some things that you, that around the house that you could use this technique. Like look and see a piece of wood. Um, you'll be amazed at how beautiful, you know, find a bit of wood in your house, um, you know, and it's probably got some lovely knots and things like that. And you can, you know, just take a piece of bark and just draw the bark as you see it. And you'll be amazed at how much you can see. Find a little leaf, find something simple and practice, um, you know, what, what um, I'm teaching you here. And you'll be quite amazed at how far you can get. I'm not going to take this any further because I've kind of made my point, but um, Let's stop the sharing right now. I'm going to uh, remove my photo, my drawing. See how everybody's doing. And you sort of, uh, from hopefully from our exercise today, have sort of seen a little bit about how classes go. Um, and one of the things that we can do, which is really fun, um, is that I can go visit different people and highlight you. And it's sort of like coming to visit you um, you know, at the table, I would go like what I would normally do in class. I'd go around, see everybody, and I go, oh, um, I, I keep my spotlight, but I'll spotlight Devora, And I'll say, hey, Devora, how's it going? Should we practice? Should you do it once to show them how I'm you going it now, yeah. So, Devora, show me what you've got. Hey, and then I'll we can myself on the spot. Wow, <laughs> pretty good. See, I'll, she's going to be doing I'll awesome. I'll spotlight you, Devora. Go back so I can spotlight you. Okay. Hold on. Uh, well, I spotlighted her with me. Oh, okay, 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 they can see her. Oh, cool, so everyone can so see I, you. So I stay here as a, as a student, but I'm spotlighting so everybody can see you. So let's just go and say, Sue, how are you doing here? Um, wow, see, that's terrific, Sue, you did a good job. Mm -hmm. How did you do in the class today? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, you can unmute yourself, darling. Unmute. Awesome. You're muted. I love it. It's fun. You do? Oh, good. Yeah. Awesome. You did a, you did a leaf. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> now you can draw your lovely teddy bears. Is that a collection or do you keep them for your grandchildren? Oh, yeah. I have a collect. I have many, many more. <laughs> oh my gosh. I've got my teddy bears. I have a drawing. I love my teddy bear. <laughs> 
Yeah, so <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to visit Renata now. Hi, Renata. How are you doing? So I'll just. Hi. How did it go today? So I'll give you Renata. You have to unmute yourself, darling. You tap the little um the little mute button at the bottom left. Okay. All right, I'll go to somebody else. I'll go to Joan. But Renata, if you unmute yourself, then I can hear you. Joan, can you unmute? There, there you I go. did. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So Renata, oh, Renata, yeah. When Renata figures that out, it's yeah. at the bottom left of your Zoom screen, darling. Hi. Hey, Joan, how did you do? Uh, I did okay. My son is a professional artist, so I'm. Uh, uh, I feel like I have, you know, he got all. He's he's the artist in the family, not me. <laughs> but you know what? That doesn't mean that you can't learn and that you can't enjoy it, Joan. And and, and you know, it'll it'll bring you very close to him as you just go through the motions of learning. I think you'd, you know, he'd probably be very proud of you. Well, he says anyone can do it. I keep saying, no, I can't. My, my, my art is photography, so I, I do photography. That's lovely. I'm, so, I'm glad to hear it. That's, it's awesome that you've got an art. And uh, hi, Renata, you're there. I'm here, yes. And awesome. I don't, I don't know if you can yeah, you're, see it, but it was fun. I can. That's great. I'm so happy. Um, let me go now to Mary Rodriguez. Mary, do you want to unmute? And I'm going to put you up here. <clears throat> okay. Hi. Uh, Hello. I, I don't know. I found it kind of frustrating. I kept um, changing the position of my hand. Let's see. But you know what? You did a very good job, didn't she, Allie? Oh. It's beautiful. And it's so it, it's it's so flowing. Oh. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And you know you'll get used to it, Mary. It won't be that bad. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna learn to relax a little bit. I kept you're going from this to this to that, and I was more focused on moving my hand than I didn't really know what was happening on the page. Tell you the truth. <laughs> well, you know what happened on the page was pretty good. Have a look at it. Like, not bad, is it? It's like, I mean, I didn't think of it as not bad i thought it was oh boy i didn't do too well <laughs> so thank I you i think you did splendidly okay so now my next who's my next client my next victim i saw um, johanna oh. i saw johanna raising her arm oh great well i'll just go one to the other like this is what i usually do um okay johanna's there okay johanna i'm gonna mute i'm gonna replace you on my spotlight and this is where we get to share terrific how did you find this, Johanna? You know, I thought I could never draw. I could only draw tulips. And the kids always got frustrated and would say to me when they were little, can't you draw anything else? And I always said, no, I should have taken this class. And I could, I could see how you could learn how to be an artist. You know, you'll be amazed, uh, Johanna, how um, much and how fast you, you develop if you if you're taught the things in the right direction and you're not going, oh, I don't have a talent for it, rather than, hey, I just never learned the skill. I'm gonna, you know? I'm gonna do some of the stuff at home, like you say, look at something and see if I can draw it. Excellent. And I can recommend my book um, and I can put in here, um, I'm, I'm going to put to everybody a, uh, a little, you can actually, Go for my book. I'm going to just let everybody know how to order it if you're interested. It's twenty five dollars. You can go to um, um, you can the the best way to 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 get it right now is I'm going to go to everyone. I'm going to go to our website, which is to, um, and I'm just going to put a link in so that you can literally tap the link and order the book. And it comes with a free webinar, and the webinar is this Sunday. And uh, we'd be delighted to have you join if you'd like. But also the webinar is the preceded to our, our art class. So even if we do them through you, Devorah, or directly you sign up at Pacific Art League, I'm starting my basic classes um, with Pacific Art League next Wednesday. Starts in one week. 
Um, I think it's Tuesday, actually, the beginning, isn't it, Allie? Yeah, I and Laura, I can yeah. send you. I can send you all the details, and then you can maybe just follow up on email with your. Oh, good. Yeah. That is lovely. And Ali, would you be willing to send the um, my link so they can order the book if they're and yeah, I will I ship. Thinking, you I was going to send uh, your book. I was going to send your upcoming classes because you also teach an, an iPad art class. It's a lot of fun. Um, yes, um, iPad. I'm going to do a little demo yeah. of that after I've sort of seen everybody. But we have so much to tell you. I hope you're not bored. <laughs> Or have to go anywhere. Um, <laughs> I have to go. I I need to talk to my doctor. That was a phone call. No worries. Um, let me go. Thank you so much. It was really nice. I enjoyed it. Shirley, thank you so much, Johanna. Um, Shirley, um, can you unmute and I'll share with you? How did you do? Unmute. You did awesome. Yay. Thank that you. looks just like a leaf. Thank you very much. It was fun. Terrific. OK, let's just look at everybody here. Let's have go to Carol, because you're unmuted. Hi, Carol. I'll just go to the guys who have unmuted. Hello. Oh, that's beautiful, Carol. That's lovely. Did you have fun? Oh, did very you much so. Awesome. That's the whole point, isn't it? It's not. This is not meant to be you know, painful, <laughs> meant to be fun. Let no, me see, fun uh, let to, me go to Lynn, I'm sorry. It was fun to have an opportunity to learn things I started learning 50 years ago. It's a wonderful refresher and, and uh, I'm having fun getting involved in art again. Thank you. So happy. Okay, let's go now to Linda. I think Linda is my next victim. Hi, Linda. How did you do? Which, which is there more than one Linda, or are you talking to me? Oh, Linda Schneider. No, you're Linda Schneider. Okay. So I only did part of the the page, and I didn't realize I had some purple on my eraser. So I just. <laughs> but you did a good job, and it looks like a leaf, and I'm I'm impressed. See, <laughs> you can do it. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you for sharing, Linda. Uh -huh. uh, and next I have um, Harriet. Are you ready to share Harriet? I'll just, oh, Marianne, Marianne's not muted. I'm just gonna go to the people who aren't muted. So unmute yourself and I'll come. Hi, Marianne. Hi, so. Look for you, that's beautiful, Marianne. And it's nice and big too. Yeah, really so cool. You, you can see in the background, there are murals in the room wow, I'm in. Who did those? Did you do uh, them? No, no, no. Um, my the mother my mother in law um, from my first marriage so she did it when my kids were little so I had talent you know with a mother in law and then a stepdad but no nothing on my side of the family <laughs> that's amazing that's amazing you know you can get up to add you know by the time I'm finished with you you'll definitely be able to add jellyfish. <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah, you'd appreciate this. She she left a little fish not filled in um, over the doorway. You can almost see it. Oh yeah, uh, with they, the idea when the kids got older that they would paint it in, but nobody ever did. And that was oh twenty five years ago. <laughs> that is amazing. That's yeah. terrific. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, um, and my I, stepdad was a professional artist too, so I appreciate you your technique because you didn't just say draw a leaf you kind of walked us through it and that helped me a lot <laughs> yeah and you know you need that you know um i really believe in building up people's confidence and you will be surprised and amazed at how brilliant you are after a few classes hmm. and you'll be able to show it to your, your you know to people who are artists in your family quite proudly and they'll go ha huh, so I'm not the only one, huh? <laughs> so let me talk to Margarita. Hi, Margarita. Hello, Hello. here. Uh, oh, that's my try. Really lovely. Thank Super. you. And Scott, are you going to let see what you've got going here? Yeah, I'm amazed. I always wanted to draw and it's like, ooh, with your instructions, it does resemble a leaf. So exactly. thank you so much. Good for you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna now go to Scott. Hello, Scott. 
Yeah. Hey, good for you. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And you've got those lines that you already had in your paper, which is actually quite useful. And that's one of the techniques that I teach is actually where you put lines and boxes onto the page called gridding. And it really helps. So that's one of the fun things that we do. Did you enjoy yourself? Thank you, Caroline. That was, was very nice. Yeah, you made it simple. Awesome. Terrific. So um, am I missing anybody that wants to share or because I see everybody else is either um, uh, muted or whatever. So I think I'm going to go back now um, and I'll go back to myself here, if that's all right. Ali, uh, so I'll just, I'm going to put my spotlight on high. So I'm back. I know a lot that you all did great. I just wanted to check in on a few of you. And when we do classes, we do check. Uh, that's how I check in. I wanted to show you. But I know Ali wants me to show you the iPad. Um, so this is the iPad I have. Uh, you don't have to have one as big as this. This is the Pro. And I have an Apple Pencil. And the Apple Pencil, um, you can get an iPad now for about $350. It's just a simple iPad and it comes with a pencil and the Apple pencil allows you to do amazing things. So I'm going to do a little quick demo. If I still got time, Devorah, tell me if my time's up. Are we still good to go, Devorah? Yeah, so these are usually about an hour, but if people can stay on, please, please do stay on and join us. It's going to be really interesting to see iPad art um, before I'm quite willing to show you um, if that would be of interest to you. If it's That'd be great. Long, let me know. I, I think if people need to drop off, they will. And I wanted to just um, mention one thing that really nicely dovetails. Um, we have uh, actually a friend of mine who um, has started a, something called Today I Notice. So you're talking about really observing all around you the different textures. Um, and they have my friend Deborah and her friend Willow have um, every day they they write down what they've noticed and they draw a little sketch uh, and post it to the internet. Um, and so they have a myriad of topics and really encourage other people to do that. So they're going to be presenting that on March 3rd. But um, in the meantime, it might be fun for people to already take their skills from today and start doing their own today, I noticed. Um, using some of the techniques we've um, learned. And then we also are going to be um, doing note cards for our members, for all of you. And so if anybody feels inspired by um, and, and feels that budding artist in them, let us know and maybe we can use one of your um, drawings for some of the cards. So please um, contact me or the office um, with some of your, your art samples and, and we can uh, discuss the note cards. Okay. Awesome. Okay, great. Well, I'm just going to um, um, share um, something here with you on my before I go. And I'm, I'm, I know Ali had wanted me to do a little demo. I'm ha totally happy to do that. Um, take the time to do that for you. Um, so, uh, but what I put in chat, Devorah, just in case anybody needs it, is um, I'm just doing now. Um, this is the link in chat, Devorah, so people can get the book if they would like to get a copy of the book. And, uh, and then it also gives in the book the link so they can join our class at Pacific Art League. Okay, so that's or, at your, your website is listed, carolinemuster.com. That's and my personal website. And then my website for the book, which is Joy of Drawing. It's um, Mobile Art Academy. Um, and um, joy, that, dot com slash joy of drawing. Great. And there you find everything. Okay. okay. So, um, and I'd love to, to see some of you um, joining our art, our, our drawing classes. Um, okay, let me just, I'm equally interested in showing you what fun you can have with your iPad. So I'm now gonna share my iPad. So you'll just see me disappear for a little bit here while I share it. Um, and to turn it on, sorry, I'm not quite ready, but I'm just gonna show you how it all works. Okay, there we go. All right, 
So this is my iPad. This is the app that I use here called Procreate. This is actually a drawing I did of myself last night. This drawing was done on my iPad. Oh. Um, I did this, this is all done on my iPad. This is the drawing right here. And then for fun, I took a photograph of myself and put it on top, but that's another thing. So that's my drawing. Um, um, I'll show you some things done on my iPad. Um, these are um, different things. This is um, a painting I did from a Monet, for a Monet class. I did this on my iPad. Um, here's another painting I did. Um, I, my son, I just come back from way up north. Um, uh, in uh, Truckee, in the mountains above Truckee. This was um, out of my window. And this was done on my iPad. And um, I can actually take a video and show you how it works. And this is actually how I painted it. So you can see a sort of thing of how I actually drew did my drawing and it'll walk all the way through the drawing and you can see me, all the individual things I did, all drawing with my iPad. And then it'll take a while, so, because this was rather difficult. Um, so um, I, I will just do a quick demo um, of how we, we learn. So you learn each thing. This is all the different brushes you have and you learn different types of brushes and how to use them. You learn how to put color on your brush. You learn how um, you can adjust the size of the brush. You can adjust the opacity of the brush. You're gonna learn how to, um, it, you, it, the, when the color goes down, it, it'll create other colors as you see that. And how you tap and hold the, the and I can now put that color right on my brush. You're gonna learn all these different things. You can learn that you can smudge the color together. You can, you learn, and then you learn you can draw with it. So I've got my 6B drawing pencils, just like you, you've been using, you know, um, your HB, 6B, just the same types of pencils. Um, and I can either put my, put my pencil on the side and with the same pencil, I can start sketching with it. And then I can take my smudge brush and I can smudge it out just as if I was drawing. So it really is just as if you were drawing. And that's how super fun it is. Now you can also, of course, do a lot of work with photographs. You can paint photographs, you learn to adjust photographs. Uh, you learn to do all kinds of things because I can insert photographs very easily um, over the top of my painting. So I can go here, I can insert a photo, um, you know, whatever I feel like, like that, I can insert that photo and you can see through the photo to what's underneath and so on and so forth. So it just goes kind of endlessly, all the different things you can do. It's a huge amount of, but I teach you gradiently in the introductory class. I teach you very gradiently um, how to um, use your iPad just as a sketchbook or as an oil painting, um, canvas or a watercolor canvas. You could do watercolors very nicely. I think I have one. This is the next class I'm doing. It's gonna be, we're gonna paint. Um, this is a, a class later on in the month. We paint a Van Gogh picture. Um, and so it's, it's just, you know, there's just endless fun that you can have with this. There's another painting I did. Um, um, of uh, a water lily. And this was all done on my iPad. I love that there's no mess. 
was no mess. This, <laughs> my was my friend, this is my friend, uh, Mara, who's a, a student that I met through um, Pacific Art League, and this is her. And uh, she got that printed for her husband for Christmas and he was happy. And you see that I put the first Noel behind the drawing, but this is, um, you know, this is life drawing. This is of her from life. So you can do a lot of life drawings, sort of fun. So yeah, this endless is another one of her that I drew and then added some color later. Um, so you can see that it, you, it's just a most wonderful tool. And on my website, um, you'll see uh, all of the different things that, um, that, that you, know, you can do under my digital gallery. Um, one of my most well-known paintings is actually hanging in Google and um, it's called Google Bikes and I'll show you right now. And I have two of them and they're both done with an iPad. Um, and I'm gonna show them to you right now and then we'll end off. Um, so this painting is about six feet by four feet, huge painting. That's number one. And that's number two. And these were all done purely with an iPad and then printed very big. And they said in Google, which I'm very proud to announce. And PAL were the first people to believe in me. And we started classes back in 2013. And we had never looked back, did we, Allie? No, it's been wonderful. And again, it's, um, it's just so nice to connect with everyone. But thank you so much, Caroline. You're so welcome. And I hope I'm, we're going to see some of you in class or again, and whatever Devorah sets up. And uh, it was great meeting you all. Thank you, Caroline. That was great. Thank you. And Devorah, I'm going to send, I have an email for you. I'm just with all just follow up um, links and everything if you want to share. Wonderful. Um, this was really, it was it's, it's such a nice way to start off the new year with, you know, giving everybody new skills and and opportunity to open new pathways in our brains and 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 observe what's around us and and try out the daunting what used to be a daunting task of drawing now will be a little little less trepidation as we approach it so thank <laughs> you very much and great to learn about the pacific art league as well thank you yeah. thank you so much thank you very much okay right Thanks everyone for attending and participating. Enjoy. Thank you. That was fun. Thanks tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. I'll go ahead and end it. Um, Ali, thanks again. Really appreciate all of your help. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. We'll be in touch. Okay. Bye.